Good day fellow investors, it's always good to copy mimic great investors and in this video I want to show you my analysis of Graftech, a company that Monish Pabrai, famous for looking at price to earnings ratios of one company, recently bought with a nice stake in his portfolio. So in this video we'll analyze Graftech and we'll see the risks and the rewards, perhaps try to find why Monish bought that and then see whether this fits your portfolio or not. There is one reason that I say, okay, I might watch it, but I'm looking for a little bit better, low, lower risk investments. Monish has a good theory there. He'll probably do well within his portfolio, but always keep in mind that when you look at these hedge funds or investment managers, they always, put it in a portfolio perspective. They might be long this, if this works out, they do five times their money. If it doesn't, they'll do on something else. We usually don't see the something else. So let's start and analyze Graftech. So overview, Graftech is a provider of high power graphite electrodes for the growing electric arc furnace steel market. There is a blast furnace to make steel and electric arc. Electric arc needs graphite electrodes to produce very high temperatures to make that steel. The company is an integrated producer as it owns Seadrift Coke, which produces 75% of the needed petroleum needle coke to make graphic elect electrodes. Higher needle coke prices create instability in the sector and therefore it's good to be integrated. The company practically went bust in 2015 when Brookfield acquired it for 1.2 2 billion. Graphite electrode prices were around 2,600 per ton in 2016, while those are, are around 10,000 now. So what was the case in 2016 might happen again. And this is a big risk because the market can change very quickly. After all, this is a commodity. So that's something to keep in mind. The management moved, how moved however, very quickly and switched from mostly selling on spot Two, immediately making long-term three to five year take or pay contracts to fix the, fix the high price and to create stability from the company. So that's what Brookfield brings to you, plus the cash to do things to improve production and everything. Now is Graftex margin a, and a PE ratio of one really what do we have there? As they said, they have these take or pay agreements at high prices, which will lead to margins, good margins and good profits for the coming three years. So over the next three years, they will have, they have already contracted 4.5 billion in revenue at the high prices, thus high margins. You, I, you can expect that the cash flows per year will be around 750, 800 million as those are now. So that is Grafted's margin of safety. So this is what Pabra is practically buying. He's buying, buy, paying 3 billion now to buy 3 billion in free cash flows over the coming four years. So whatever Graftech does after year four will be free for Pabra. However, if electrode prices go down, then there will be, things will get very risky for Graftech because Yes, they have good prices, good margins, good cash flows, but they also have a long-term debt of 2 billion. They intended to pay it down over the years, but you never know with such high debts and in such a volatile environment as graphic, graphic uh, electrodes, anything can happen. And here we come to Brookfield and their relation to Graftech. They bought it, financed it, lent a lot of money to it and now they want to get rid of it. When the stock price hit 19, they immediately sold the shares to Graftech for a buyback. But that already tells you, okay, Brookfield wants to get rid of this. So perhaps the upside is limited. Perhaps at, 20, at 17, 20, they'll say, okay, get rid of it. So the upside is not five times on a price earnings ratio of one. The upside might be only 50, 100%. So it's important to put things into a perspective of the big owner. Before selling, before going public, they didn't have the money to issue a dividend. So they issued a loan in the form of a dividend 
to Brookfield and saying, here is your dividend, but we'll pay you six months later when we get the money. So Brookfield even took 750 million out of the company prior to going public in a form of a provi provisionary note. So there is a lot of, let's say, big owner that dealings with the company that is not really for the small shareholder. And perhaps Pabra, I looked it into, I didn't look deep into it, but it's a risk that I'm seeing plus the debt. Brookfield wants to get their money. They have 2 billion in the company from there into the company. So they first want to get out debt by having the company pay back or something. So, or selling the company. So it's very intriguing how this will go forward. And if those electric prices go down, then we might see trouble over the horizon. Over the very long term, however, I think Pabra is bullish on steel making, especially as he's from India and the Indian economy is about to start on the voyage that China already, uh, that happened already in China. Let's dig more into the steel market because that's also a key factor when analyzing graph tech. So EF steel making, global steel prices have been softening a bit. If there is a recession, those will soft. If there is no recession, those will stay strong. But the stock price, stock market usually predicts five of the coming two recessions. Now probably five of, out of one coming recession. So the stock price already declined significantly from the highs after the IPO. However, if there is a decline in the demand for steel, graphite electrode prices can easily tank as it was the case in 2016, when it fell approximately to 2,500 per metric ton. However, on the other hand, on the positive, on the upside, the electric arc furnace steel sector remains positive. There will be a nice future for graph tech. If China goes from 9% EAF to 20% steel production, demand for like electrodes will remain high no matter what happens in the environment. Petroleum needle coke that's used to create these graphic electrodes now has demand coming also from making those negative electrodes with lithium ion batteries. So more competition, higher prices that might keep prices higher of electrodes. China is trying to produce the necessary needle coke by using coal, but the quality might not be sufficient to jeopardize graph tech positions. Albeit, there, is, there are many, many new productions, expansions entering the field, which is also a big negative for graph tech. So one has to watch Brookfield and furnace needle coke market EF market, steel market. So this is the volatility. And we don't know whether Pabrai is hedged somewhere with it. On the long term, the outlook is very positive. Much more iron or steel metals will be needed. So much more graphite electrodes will be needed. When I put this into a conclusion, why did Pabrai buy this, let's say the down 100% in case of Brookfield taking out the money and not being there a good environment, I give a 15% chance to zero, down 50%, 15% chance to let's say six, seven, up two times, 40%, three times, 20% and five times, which is also possible because if the company continues to make money as it does, after four years, you're practically paying 700 million now to get 700 million in cash flows for the long term. So that's a price earnings ratio of one that will probably become a five beggar. So 10% chance. So the value of this company is 25 over five years. If I discount that to the present value, then I get to the current stock market price. So it's not really a buy for me, but you never know what can happen. Perhaps his upside percentages are much higher or he's hedged with something else, some Chinese or Indian company that will do good producing petroleum coke if they make it. I don't know. In any, in any case, I think I'm looking for simpler investments, lower risk investments with higher upsides based on not so much the management issues, not so much market issues, but based simply on irrationality of the market on long term trends. This might be something fitting. However, I don't have the confidence because I just researched this one day. If I keep following the company over year, two year, three years, a lot will happen. And then I might buy over two, three years. I need a lot of 
time to get the confidence to buy something, to be really convinced, okay, this is it. I have already a nice portfolio. So this at this moment in time doesn't fit the threshold. Perhaps next year it will, I'll keep it on my uh, list, I'll analyze, I'll update, I'll lo look into the earnings and then who knows when, perhaps five years, ten years down the road. Investing is a very, very long term game. Thank you for watching. If you want to see my portfolio, don't forget to check my stock market research platform. It's really a bargain. And uh, if you have any questions, send me an email or send me a message on Facebook. I'll see you in the next video.